In Dragon Ball GT, audiences were introduced to the Shadow Dragons. Called forth after the battle with Super 17, the Shadow Dragons were the result of negative energy being stored up inside of the Earth's Dragon Balls. There were seven in all, with each dragon spawned by a wish. Some of these dragons were incredibly powerful, while others weren't quite as impressive. Nonetheless, they remained one of the most popular aspects of GT even years after it ended. But what if the Shadow Dragons went beyond on GT? What if the Shadow Dragons were rebooted like Broly in Dragon Ball Super? How much potential would they have as villains? Well, in this video, we're going to discuss that. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and enable notifications so you can see all of my content right away when it comes out. Okay guys, so joining me in this video, you've seen him on my videos in the past, and his name is... What's up guys, MJ here from MJ TV, and it's a pleasure to be back on the channel, Mike, how are ya? I'm doing pretty good, and we're gonna once again be talking about, on this channel, Dragon Ball GT, which I know instantly people are gonna say, but Mike, that's not canon! But hey, in Dragon Ball, that word is very loose recently, especially with the upcoming movie. Who who cares about canon? Exactly. So we're going to be talking about today the Shadow Dragons and their potential as villains, not only in terms of how powerful they could become, but also in terms of if they were, say, rebooted like Broly and perhaps given new life in Dragon Ball Super. So MJ, let's first start off with how strong the Shadow Dragons can become. And of course, there are seven of them, just like the seven Dragon Balls that they're based on. So let's get into some of the dragons right now and talk about how powerful they were at the time and how powerful they could theoretically become if they were to say train or go about increasing their power by other methods. Let's talk about like the weaker ones right now MJ. So the ones such as Hage Shenron, Oceanus Shenron, and the like. When it comes down to Hage Shenron he's almost considered like a comical version of the Shadow Dragons and I guess Oceanus as well seemed to be sort of a threat at least to what they were at the time but a lot of these weaker tier dragons that we see in GT are somewhat just kind of outclassed and Goku in a sense does like a wrestling promo and kind of buries all of them when he meets Nova but <laughs> <laughs> I guess the interesting thing is is that Rage and all of them I guess introduce kind of a cool ability and that's something that all the shadow dragons have and even in some of these weaker tier dragons you know whatever you want to rank them as on your power scale whatever your opinion on them is you have to at least acknowledge that all of them present a very cool and somewhat unique ability and what I mean by that is let's take a look at rage for example so rage has I guess this ability to I guess just use it's like electricity what is it lightning like well, what would you like call it as yeah he basically conjures up powerful energy which is reminiscent of electricity or I guess you could say lightning he's kind of like the Thor dragon of the group <laughs> right now i don't know if he's as badass as Thor is, but <laughs> i think that in itself is very interesting because it kind of goes back to that whole i guess nature aspect and that's one thing i think the shadow dragons did kind of provide for us and oceanus and haze kind of like whatever to me because like i mentioned earlier haze is kind of the more comical version and we kind of see him get jobbed out like right in the beginning you know so he really isn't too much to talk about i think when it comes to these lower tiers he even though they have interesting abilities, there's not much I can really say for them because they're kind of just there, bro, and they kind of get taken out more so compared to like Nova, who has like a more, I guess, interesting personality. We can kind of base how he would fit in Super plus his training and all that and how powerful he could become. Yeah, when it really comes down to the Shadow Dragons, the ones that I feel like have the most potential are really the more popular ones, I guess we could say in this case, such as Nova Shenron and Ice Shenron and of course, Sin Shenron. Shenron, who becomes Omega Shenron once he absorbs the power of the other Shadow Dragons. So when it comes to Nova Shenron, he has those two different forms. He has the first form that he fights Goku in when Goku is kind of depleted of energy at the time. You know, he's running around for a little while and he's really hungry. He is Kid Goku after all, so that's one of his things. And, you know, he eventually has to become a Super Saiyan 4 to fight Nova at this point. And there is a point where it appears 
appears that Nova has Goku defeated, but that's only because, you know, he could have attacked him from behind. And there even is a period of time where it seems like Goku could have done the same. However, it's really once Nova transforms into his more golden looking form, something that Frieza must have been a fan of, <laughs> you know, he becomes a real threat for Goku. And, you know, those powers that he has that are based on heat, like how he can reflect sunlight and turn it into a really powerful laser. And then that like hell inferno that he has that he eventually traps Omega within are really powerful. And I could see him really expanding that power if he were to train. Although unfortunately, he never got to finish his fight with Goku. So we can't say for a fact if he really was, I guess, on full power Super Saiyan 4 Goku's level. Well, when it comes down to Nova, and this is one of the reasons that I think we can use him more so than the others, because even though the others have, I guess, personalities, they're not really taken seriously. You know, they don't take themselves too seriously. And even characters like Goku and Pan don't take them too seriously. Whereas Nova, it's a completely different monster, if you will, and a different situation, if you will. And with Nova, we can at least headcanon that with how he acted towards Goku and how he acted in that fight, we could imply that, okay, maybe he's somebody who would like to grow stronger. He saw Goku as a rival. He wanted to test Goku at his best, something that Goku and Saiyans and other, I guess, respected martial artists do. You could apply the logic that if Goku was stronger than him and he was able to stay alive and what could his potential be in future series if he was ever brought back or rebooted, you could say maybe he would want to train too. And there's many different ways you can train in Dragon Ball, martial arts training, gravity room training, the room of spirit and time training, all sorts of stuff. And I think with Nova, he's somebody you could really, really progress. But with Ice, I think that's a bit different. He comes off as somebody very cocky. So I don't know if you want to elaborate more on Ice Shinron. Yeah, Ice is a character who from the very beginning, we can tell is someone who likely isn't as powerful as his brother Nova. But at the same time, he also likes to employ like dirty tactics. You know, he blinds Goku at one point. He is trying to like team up on him with Nova. You know, he's really not honoring that warrior's code that his brother likes to honor, you know, and he likes to really involve himself in. So, you know, I feel like Ice probably could train and become more powerful, like assuming that the dragons actually have the ability to train and become more powerful. They are magical beings after all. Right. But I feel like he probably doesn't have as much potential just because of his mindset that someone like Nova does. He doesn't have the drive. Yeah, Nova reminds me a lot of Hit in some ways, as we saw in Dragon Ball Super. But one of the things I wanted to bring up with Nova is that he also has the ability to transform. So, you know, imagine if he were to create even further transformations as well, you know, to borrow something from the Saiyans and Frieza. Like, imagine if he had his own rainbow form or something crazy like that, diamond form, you know, and refracted the light even more in an insane way. You know, I feel like there's some fun ways you could take it with that character. And that also leads me into talking about Sin Shenron, who was pretty much the most evil of the group. In some ways, he kind of reminds me of Frieza, especially how he attacks Nova, like right off the bat with that finger beam, the Dodon Pai, I guess. Right. And, you know, like he's the one who eventually absorbs the other Dragon Balls into himself and becomes Omega Shenron. So I think that he's probably someone who could also become incredibly powerful if he were to train. Basically, not only is he powerful, but if he were to say do the same thing again that he did before by absorbing the powers of the Shadow Dragons, especially if the Shadow Dragons were to say train before he did that, then his potential could also be very well determined by the potential and the strength of the other dragons around him. Like, it'd be an interesting question as well, MJ, if when he absorbs them, if he can actually increase his own potential by their own. Do you think that's a possibility? I think that is because one thing that separates Omega or, you know, Sin and Nova from Ice is that Ice doesn't seem to have that drive now. Even though Sin does perform his own dirty tactics, if you will, he does still have that taste for power and not the power that Ice would, I guess, say it is, you know, like winning dirty and doing all that stuff. He does seem to actually want to be stronger than somebody. So you could apply similar logic from Nova to Sin or Omega, whatever you want to call him. But with Omega, the thing that I do find interesting about his personality is that he is somebody who even when confronted by Gogeta, the dude didn't back down. I found that to be like very badass. And I feel like if you were to take someone like Omega, like you said, who has, I guess, the power now and not only the power, but perhaps even the potential, you could say with the fact that he absorbed people like Nova, that maybe he could even further his forms and transform. I 
think that would be something crazy if they really wanted to go that route you could really break down what type of abilities and what he inherited from each of those individual dragons and if he can transform and utilize higher transformations and utilize all their abilities you could be dealing with a very very powerful character and if you want to say hey let's bring him into super going off of super and how super handles the power creep then sheesh he could be a force to be reckoned with you know <laughs> yeah it'd be insane especially if he had those transformations and then he has the ability on top of that to basically corrupt everything with his negative karma around him and just by existing could have eventually destroyed the entire universe so like that's crazy powerful but like you said if we were to take these characters and reboot them similar to broly in the new movie in dragon ball super then it'd be really interesting to see how they handled that but i think a really cool way to do it in this case would be instead of using the earth dragon balls what if maybe we had the super dragon balls give us the super shadow dragons instead of just like the regular shadow dragons and you have like a giant universe sized black star dragon coming out of the super dragon balls and setting all this in motion i think just because of the fact that they come from those balls these characters would immediately be way more powerful than they were in gt and maybe provide a multiversal threat what do you think that would be dope i can actually see the possibility of when the dragon like spreads apart like how it did in gt and how it went all around the earth imagine it going to like seven different universes that'd be awesome that'd be dope so now you have the universes possibly needing to team up and everyone kind of scatters throughout the multiverse in order to, like, to stop these threats i think that would be a very very interesting idea you could see like the pride troopers come together again you could see universe six saiyans come together again and search for wherever these dragons landed and they're wherever in the universe and they have to go out and find them i think that would be a very very cool idea and it's definitely one of those ideas mike that can outdo a multiversal tournament because that's always been the question with super is you do an arc where a guy can destroy the timeline and break the timelines you do an arc where now we have a multiversal tournament how can you top this stuff i think that's an idea that can definitely top that yeah absolutely it'd be such a cool idea to see done in super assuming that it's done well of course you know right <laughs> so it'd be really cool to see that come about and you know i feel like these characters just like in gt really have a lot of potential to become really interesting and perhaps some of the best villains and antagonists that we've seen and maybe with the case with somebody like nova you know we could see him come back as a recurring character after all this would be over assuming that super continues but the main thing that people have always said about the shadow dragons that they liked was how they were tied back into the lore of dragon ball you know what the old kai said about how the dragon balls have consequences when they're overused so with beerus they kind of tied beerus into dragon ball super by tying it into him being the one who sealed away the old kai in the sword so if that were to once again come back to what he said with the dragon balls and this time applied to the super dragon balls the most powerful ones of all then that'd be pretty awesome and maybe it would also give us the opportunity to finally see Zalama and see what he's all about no yeah I agree with you that's something that they never really showed in super so to go back to that plot thread I think would be something very interesting to see plus we could probably see even the universe six Namekians and stuff like that which again that would also be kind of cool yeah that'd be awesome so what do you guys think let us know down below make sure to check out MJ TV in the description and end screen and if you're new to this channel make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you can see all of my videos right away when they come out and if you like this video then make sure to stick around because there's a lot more to come in the future yeah the potential gains of the shadow dragons would be massive i'd love to pose alongside the super omega shenron and his massive evil gains <laughs>